Hey guys, Core Ross, and welcome to Six News. So today we have the patch notes for Operation Shadow Legacy. Let's go through them bit by bit and see what we have here. So of course, new season Operation Shadow Legacy brings us zero, and he gets the SC three thousand K assault rifle, which is really really nice so far. I've been loving it. We got the MP seven, interesting choice. I wonder who will pick that over the assault rifle. Going to be curious to see who ends up maybe running this as our main. Then we got the 5.7 USG pistol. Has a suppressor on it, which you cannot take off. And his secondary gadgets are frag grenades or claymores. And he's two speed, two armor. And he has a gadget which he can shoot through walls. And yeah, it's pretty damn cool. It also can fire a single laser. Of course, I've got a video on that if you want to go check out exactly how he works. But moving on down here, we've got the Chalet rework, which was supposed to be coming in Season 4, but it's turned up in Season 3, which presumably means that we're going to be getting Skyscraper in Season 4 instead. So, interesting change. Don't know why we haven't had an official word on that yet, but like I say, I assume Skyscraper is coming next season. And it's a really big rework. You can even get up here onto the actual roof, which is crazy, and a lot of the layout has changed dramatically it's uh, probably one of the biggest changes when it comes to reworked maps. But moving on down here, we have ping 2.0. This is awesome. So you can ping enemy gadgets and it'll actually ID the operator, which is great. But of course, the big thing is being able to ping stuff like frost traps, cap cam traps, making it far easier for your team to be able to take advantage of all the information you can give over. And of course, if you don't have comms on, if you don't have a mic, you're not talking to your teammates, this is really good for like solo play where you're just not too bothered about actually communicating with people. You can also do stuff that normally wouldn't be quite so easy. So for instance, you can ping the diffuser and let everyone know exactly where it is. So as a defense, you could kind of set up around it instead of actually defend the objective sites. And you can also ping stuff like Gemini hologram. You can ping the deployable shields that Goyu puts out and you can then identify which ones are which. There's a lot of very interesting things you can do with this new ping system. And we haven't really even got into it yet. It's going to be really cool to try out and uh, play with it even more. And if you're like me and you use a controller, there's going to be a bit of getting used to for this because they've switched the ping and the rate of fire buttons. So like in the preview build that I was playing, I was constantly switching rate of fire rather than pinging stuff. So you have to get used to that, unfortunately. I'm not actually sure why they changed it. It doesn't really seem like it matters which part of the D-pad that's on, but they have. Then we've got map ban. So this is the ability in ranked and unranked to actually ban out maps you don't want to play. So it's like pick and ban. You get to choose one of three different options to ban. So let's say we picked Oregon here, we could ban that out. Then the other team comes in and they ban bank. Then we play on coastline or let's say both teams ban oregon then we play on a random of one of these two over here so yeah going to be interesting and it does mean you can stop playing the maps you don't want to play so i guess that is a bonus and i can't wait to actually see that and try it out then we've got match replay this is coming to the test server only it might come out this season we don't yet know entirely but it's in alpha stage right now and it's going to be in a test ever to actually try out and play. So you're going to be able to do spectator cam, which is what you see on like Pro League and that, and also a switch to any operator on any team at any point. And yeah, you have your, like your recent matches in the game, and you can go in and do whatever you want, and you can fast forward, you can rewind, pause. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to actually play on the test server, and I don't really see any downsides to it, but it is a pity that there's no free cam. You can't go and set up really cool shots, which I would have loved for like my Mistbuster series, set up really sweet shots. You can't do that, but maybe in the future that'll get added in. We'll have to wait and see. This is probably the most controversial thing in this entire update, and that is the secondary gadget, Hard Breacher. Now it doesn't actually look quite as green in this in the game, but you can see how it works. The attacker places it on the wall, pulls the pin, then it sets off this charge, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and then boom, hole in the wall. And it basically looks like a square once you're done with it. And you can actually vault through or crouch walk through. But the attackers with this only get to bring one. And it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. The idea is it doesn't replace hard breachers. But it just means you don't have to always have a hard breacher. Especially on some objectives. So yeah, it's going to be a big deal. And I can't wait to see how it plays out. Another big deal is the new sites. Red Dock, Holographic. 
and a 1.5 and a 2.0 so these are brand new scopes you also got a 3.0 as well and they've changed the ACOG amazingly it's it says in game right now that it's a 2.5 but it's not it's a 3x it's going down to a 2.5 in the new season but I have a full dedicated video if you want to go check out all that stuff you can also customize your optic colors as well so this is going to be very nice for colorblind but also really good just for general players like I could see myself making my sights all one color and then actually changing the opticity because you can actually bring that down too as well. So yeah, that's going to be huge. Then we've got the reinforcement pull. This means that the defending team has 10 reinforcements, but anyone can put them all up. So you can put out five, another person can put up two, another person can put up another couple. I do see this being potentially bad, of course, in like casual or just in ranked if someone's trying to troll you. You know, running out the other side of the map and putting all the reinforcements up somewhere else. So yeah, it's uh, going to be interesting to see how trollers use it. But for team play, it is so, so nice. And especially for like Capcan, he can go off, put down all his traps. Doesn't have to worry about his reinforcements. He can go off and do that. So that's a massive buff to him. Then we've got Thatcher. Now I've already got a video up on the Six News channel which goes over the blog put up by the developers where they actually explain all these changes and why they're doing them because this one's a massive one and basically every single gadget will now be disabled by the EMP not destroyed and it's going to be a huge change like I don't, I don't know how it's going to play out for him in the long term I need to play with him for a couple of weeks and see how it works but yeah it's it's huge then down here you've got the squad finder and this allows you to find squad mates to play with and it seems to be pretty good you can actually like you can get like proper invitations and you can send out invitations and stuff it sounds like it's actually going to be quite good and kind of built into the uh, system itself so it'll be interesting to see when it actually comes out then we've got this which is a stat tracker and uh, this is one i'm really interested about the thing that i'm really curious about is you can actually select exact date ranges you want to see how you're doing on certain days and stuff so yeah i'm i'm really actually quite excited to see what this looks like as well but right now i've only seen screenshots then we've got operator price drops of course operators are going down in price but look at this this is a new seasonal skin oh my god i'm liking the look of it it's kind of a carbon fiber matte black look this is my kind of skin so looking forward to seeing this in game when the test server's up but that it looks very 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 nice only one of course but we do know we're getting a whole bunch of really cool cosmetics for the next battle pass as well and then we've got balancing so this gives us the more details on the hard breach this is who is getting the hard breach so monty is getting the hard breach but he's losing stuns ying's losing breaching charges fuse is losing smokes Finca's losing breach Amaru replacing Claymore, Nukes losing Breach, Capital's losing Stuns, Lion is losing Claymore, so that's the people who get the new Hard Breach gadget. Monty getting one, I think is crazy. I'm absolutely amazed by that. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to survive the test ever. We'll have to wait and see. Maverick is getting a buff, so he's getting six gas canisters to power his blowtorch instead of five. Very nice little buff for him, so that's nothing bad there. And then this here details the new sites. So we're getting the red dot, the hollow, the 1.5 and 2.0. And like I say, also the 3.0 here. And the ACOG has gone to 2.5. Even though it says 2.5 in the game right now, that is a complete lie to you. It is actually a 3.0. But they're now moving it to a 2.0 in the new season. And of course, the loadouts are changing dramatically when it comes to sites. Again, I go over that in my dedicated video for it. So yeah, that's going to be huge big change but i see this more as a player comfort thing rather than it being a a, a kind of meta changing thing it's just going to be more enjoyable with having these different increments of scopes and the developers are going to obviously use them for balancing as time goes on as well but then talking about player comfort we've actually got some interesting stuff here so there's going to be a minimum mmr gain or loss so this from, from reading it it sounds like it's just going to be a bit nicer to play ranked games but i don't know I, you know, this is this is definitely one of those things where this we'll have to play basically the entire season to see how this plays out. But that's what they're doing. They're also changing some vote to kick stuff, which is coming later in the season. So we'll see how this works out. I'm going to kind of ignore it for now until we actually see it, because yeah, you never know if you know it's really going to make a massive difference. We've also got Caster HUD 
uh, upgrades as well. This is for spectator cam. You don't see that at all in normal game, but you might see it playing like Pro League and stuff like that, or if you do custom games yourself. So it won't hit on that either. But then we've got this. So we're going to have some different ways of getting the gadget out correctly. This one here I read already, and I've got no idea what the hell it means. They're bringing ahead something from Season 4, which is uh, projectile map asset destruction changes. So I've got no idea how that actually plays out in game. And uh, yeah, I have no idea about that one at all. But they do say here that it makes stuff like more predictable and things. Like I think it might be like putting down a deployable shield and it like smashes all the stuff around it so you can actually place it down fine kind of thing. Then you've got ADS sensitivity. So what they've given is the ability to actually customize the sensitivity for every scope magnification which means you can do the one axis, the two axis, 2.5, 3.0, you can do the whole lot and you can modify them however you want, which again for player comfort is a really, really good thing. Then they've got some upgrades to vault detection. This again should make the game just a little bit smoother. Again, good thing. They've got some updates to reverse friendly fire for hostage rules. And now I expect they're not going to actually give us the details on what this means, but it means that people can't take advantage of certain ways about it. So yeah, they're doing that. The MMR rollback cap, apparently they're putting a cap on this now. So we're going to see how this affects things. Again, this is a big long seasonal thing until we actually see how this works out and if it's better. Then they've got the sound refactory. So they've begun the process of upgrading their entire sound system in the game. And this means that they should be able to fix sound issues going forward because previously they were very limited. Will that actually work out? We will have to find out in the future. Anyway, guys, that's the patch notes right now. Like I say, I've got other videos up on the Six News channel and on this channel going over all this stuff. And let me know what you think of all this. And of course, I'll be getting on the test server. I'll be testing everything. I'll be making Mythbuster videos. But yeah, that's about it. Oh, we'll end with one thing. The Dockaby Elite is now out. Alright guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.